Good day to you guys, I'm Gerald Varad and this is a tutorial series, a step-by-step -step process about Cisco Packet Tracer simulating a basic MPLS connection. And finally, I welcome you to Module 6. Our intended learning outcome for this module is for you to establish your own MPLS connection. So sit back and relax and let's get right into the action. So how can we use Cisco Packet Tracer in a project scale scenario? Let's say a company or a organization has a project for immediate implementation of interconnecting its IT systems and online accessibility for its business application. And here are their requirements. They said that main site has three IPs for data in a single network and one network for VOIP or voice. And as for the two regional sites, each has two IP of data or computers in a single network and one network for voice. And then each branches must at least have one network for data and one network for voice. The IP address block for the entire network or the root network address must be either slash 23 or slash 24 but we'll use slash 24. We'll start right off with the construction of the core of our MPLS connection by placing three routers in the middle. But this time we'll use the 2911 switch because this router enables us to add modules to it by clicking the router and at the physical tab. And we'll use the HWIC-2T module because this module adds a serial high-speed wide area network interface card and one module provides two serial ports. In constructing a MPLS connection, it is important that our routers have multiple ports. But before we can add modules to it, we must turn the router off by clicking this switch. And we'll use two modules of HWIC-2T and two covers by drag and dropping it to place. Then turn the router back on. And we'll just have to do that again two more times. But before we connect all of these routers, we need to assign a proper network for each connection. By going back to our subnet calculator, our client required us to use the subnet mask of slash 24 for our root network, meaning to say 24 bits of it is maybe already occupied or used. We now only have 8 more bits remaining to establish this network. So I'll assign it to be 111.111.111.0 slash 24 with a subnet mask of slash 28. Our root network address will be divided into 16 subnetworks. Then I'll list all of the subnet details into a spreadsheet. Then just like what I've discussed in module 5, I subnet the first three subnets to be my MPLS1 connection in order for the wide area network connection to have exactly two IP address for each subnetwork. And this is what it looks like if we visualize it. After subnetting the first three subnets, I list down all of the subnet details of each subnet. Then I assign the network for each connection, like for example, router A to B, B to C, C to A, etc. Just like what I did in module 5. Now that I have my network and IP addresses, it's time to place a note beside each connection to help us determine which port has an IP address and which connection of network is which. And this will also efficiently help us in creating a routing table later on. So I'll place the network address in the middle. Then I'll check which port I'll use for the connection. Once that I know the port number, I'll note it down beside the router, then connect it to the other router, and do the same. Then I'll assign the port's IP address from its network's usable IP address for the two ports.
and that's one connection. I'll just have to do that few more times. But with the power of editing, with just a flick of a hand, I've already finished the core of the MPLS connection. And let's go back to our client's requirement. One main site, two regional sites, and two branches. For each site, it means one router and a switch. And again, with the power of editing, I'll drop the devices in. And adding more router, it means there is another connection of router to router. And you know what this means. I'll have to assign a network address again and IP address again just like what I did just earlier. And now it is done. Each of the router's configuration is now complete with the exception of the routing table. We'll do that later. They said that main site has three IPs for data in a single network and one network for VOIP or voice. And as for the two regional sites, each has two IP of data or computers in a single network and one network for voice. And then each branches must at least have one network for data and one network for voice. Now that all of our end devices has been dropped, we need to connect them to their corresponding switch. But we are still not finished. We must assign their IP address, subnet mask, and default gateway for each end device. But I already covered that in module 1 and 5. Going back to our spreadsheet, we have here a list of each network from main site, region site 1, region site 2, up to branch 1 and 2. And I list all of the usable IP address and now it's time to assign them to our end device. And lastly, the most time consuming part of this project it's the static routing or the routing table, but I already got that covered from module 4 and 5 so I won't be discussing that here, but I'll still have to do that in a time lapse. Our routing table is done. Each device has their assigned IP address, subnet mask, and default gateway. Our MPLS connection is now up and ready to send packets to each network. And that ends module 6 and the entire tutorial series. I hope you guys learned something from this tutorial and I thank you for sticking around and watching the videos. See you guys next time. Bye bye.